Hi, I'm Tally, chairman and uh, founder of Color by Amber. And I want to take just a minute today and talk to you about something near and dear to my heart, which is uh, Color by Amber's Full Circle Program. I founded the Full Circle Program over 10 years ago, uh, before Color by Amber uh, even started, as part of 3Form, which makes our wonderful, beautiful, translucent materials. I traveled to distant locations like Africa and Nepal and different countries in South America looking for different artisan communities. So much of what I found in sort of mass consumption had all moved to these nameless factories in China and it just lacked authenticity. I, on the other hand, loved what I found in some of these small artisan communities. And as um, I and the three form broader company became more entrenched and got to know these communities, um, we were then able to begin to assist in a lot of different ways and begin to make a difference for these artisans. One of the reasons that I founded Color by Amber is because Full Circle is a big deal. It's a big story. It's too big for just three form alone. I needed, I needed and wanted a way that we can take the Full Circle story uh, to a bigger audience, to a broader audience. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about what we uh, together are doing at Color by Amber is taking the full, the full circle message out to a broader audience. Um, we are making a difference in the lives of these artisans in different locations. And let me just tell you a little bit about how that works. So in many cases, um, these artisans have, they've made products before for other companies. In some cases, those are fashion companies. Now the problem with fashion companies is that one season they do something and then all of a sudden it's gone and they don't have any business for a long time. So with the three-form material, we can take these inner layers that they make and we can recolor them, we can shape them into different uh, jewelry pieces, and we can continue to give them business. Their overriding concern is, Tally, how can you, can you create a consistent source of revenue for us? So first of all, understand that they set the price for these things. We don't haggle with them about, oh, we need it cheaper, and you've got to do this faster and more efficiently. We understand how things work in Africa. In Africa, it takes a little longer to make that Indem product in Africa to, to actually spin, to weave the fabric, to dye it, to sew those things together. It takes a little bit longer. These are, for that product alone, these are 10 women who come to work every day to a building that's been provided to them. Um, they bring their children with them and they kind of trade off and when you when you enter that building it doesn't look like a very efficient factory with everybody just working as fast as they can they do things a little differently over there we recognize that we are there to um, help them create a sustainable livelihood number two to help train them so they have skills to prepare them to uh, you know for the future and number three to help um, provide a better situation for their family and help with some of the infrastructure. And so when they talk to me, they say, Tally, how can you grow this business? How can you create more demand for our skills and the things that we do? And that's what I love about Color by Amber. And that's where um, I just want to say thank you for what you were doing to take this message out to a broader audience. You are moving the needle. So what is most important to them? is the actual sale of the product. They sell that at a fair trade wage that doesn't just pay a minimum uh, level of existence, but helps them, it provides for education, access to health care, and the things that they need to have a brighter future for them and their families. So that is very exciting. Now, of course, in addition to that, we also donate 10% of the profits on all of the full circle products back to those communities and those and that those funds then go to help pay for infrastructure projects things like drip irrigation systems uh, training for the micro savings groups in Africa and they're very appreciative of those things um, you know that that money um, goes to help give them better equipment things like that but really what's on their mind most of all is how are we at color by amber going to get the message out how are we going to get the message out so that we can um, make this big and really create sustainable income. They're thinking about their future and they really aren't looking for a handout. What they want is a bright future. They're, they're willing to work 
They simply want to have that um, opportunity and a market that can continue to create demand for the wonderful materials and products that they make every day. Nepal is a very similar story. We work very closely with Lakpa there. Lakpa Sherpa was born in the uh, Solo Kumbu region, and his father had been an entrepreneur. Lakpa's wife is deaf, and so he has um, empathy, a deep sense of empathy for women with disabilities. And he has a number of different workshops that work on different products. So the paper making workshop up in the Solo Kumbu region is one of those. And then he, does, he has the silk workshop, and he has um, a number of other you know, bamboo workshops in different areas. And several of those workshops, in particular the silk making workshop, employs almost exclusively women with handicaps, and particularly women who suffer from loss of hearing. And that's partially simply because of his background with his own wife. And um, um, at Lakpa, in, in Nepal, we provide employment for over 300 women. And again, I get calls regularly from Lakpa asking me, how are things going? Tally, how are things going? Um, biggest concern is, can you keep generating demand? Can you grow the demand so that we can continue to provide opportunities for uh, our artisans here in Nepal? Artisan, uh, Nepal is such a, an amazing area with a rich tradition of artisanry. artisanry. And they've suffered from really not having a market. Uh, for their for their products. So we are really creating a market for the products that they make every day. Um, now, of course, in Nepal, just like in Senegal, 10% of the uh, of the profits go back in the form of helping uh, pay for uh, um, reconstruction after the earthquake, new equipment. We're introducing micro savings in Nepal, and they are so appreciative of that. They absolutely um, just love that. But that's not what's first and foremost on their minds are, listen, we, we, uh, we want you to have a healthy business. We want, to, we want to know what are you doing to grow the business and the market for these products. Because they're thinking in the future. They're thinking, you know, two years from now, five years from now, are we going to continue? Is this going to be bigger than it is today? And my assurance to them is that I am so excited about what we are doing at Color by Amber. And I said, you need to meet our stylists. Our stylists are so amazing and they do such an amazing job of taking this message, taking the full circle message out and um, and talking about that and helping get people excited about where these products come from. Not only are they amazingly beautiful, beautiful jewelry pieces, but they have a story unlike any other. There is no other company in the world that is doing what Color by Amber is doing today um, in order to help women artisans around the world and empower these women artisans. So I'm very excited about it. So our full circle program is, first and foremost, it is, it is the heart of what we do. If you look at our jewelry, you see that these inner layers are encapsulated within each piece. And likewise, that whole, we have structured our company around this so that every time that we uh, sell a piece of beautiful color by amber jewelry, um, a fair trade wage goes back to those artisans and they, we create that future for them. In addition to that, we donate 10% of the profits of the sale of any full circle item back to those communities. And, and those funds go back uh, in the form of projects, community projects. None of that money goes into, into any individual artisan. But that goes back in the form of community projects such as micro savings or irrigation or whatever that may be. Recently we had a program in Nepal where we bought dairy cows and Dosi did a presentation just at our leadership summit and talked about these dairy cows and we bought the dairy cows and um, what they found was that these dairy cows, the milk they produced was not selling for enough money to actually justify the cost of feeding these cows way up high in the mountains. And so Dosi brought a cheese maker in and figured out how they could make cheese and sell that cheese at a higher price. And now that dairy cow project is working. So these are some of the examples of little projects that we're helping the community with. And I can't tell you how much I love it, how appreciative, how appreciative I am um, of each of you in sharing this vision with me and taking this message to the world. We need to make this big. We need to take this message out and make this big so that um, we can connect all the dots and do what we have committed to do for these uh, groups of people in Nepal, in Africa, and in different parts of the world where we work. So thank you for being part of this journey. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. Thanks again.